Haunted house workers of Reddit, what's the worst thing you've witnessed? We had a haunted trail and a harried through a haunted forest at the place I worked when I was a teen. One part of the forest was really dense and had trees packed in close, and at that part of the ride the park owners decked the trees out in all shades of nin glow and the dark streamers and placed black lights to make it really trippy. Usually, as the hayride started into that section, clowns would start flitting between the trees, inching closer and closer to the ride until the kids, and plenty of the adults, lost it. One day, the clowns decided to bring along coolers with beer and have a little party. They ended up getting so drunk that about half of them laid down in the trail to stop the hay truck, and the other half tried to hijack the thing, hollering about raising their pay. Another time, we trailed to a guide's deviated from the script a bit with a gag about an escaped convict, and a couple people called 9. 1. 1. When I was a little kid I was walking through a haunted house that was set up in a couple rooms in a school or something, and I turned a corner and saw some middle aged woman screaming and violently stomping out some guy who was dressed up as a scarecrow. I think his job was to lay on the ground, and just kind of lurch forward at people as they walked by, and he scared the lady so badly that she just started curb stomping the crap out of him. She eventually stopped after he started screaming, and he just kind of got up and limped out of the room. My mom worked at a haunted house when I was younger, somewhere between 6 and 10. She was a skeleton and jumped out and hugged me as we were going through and I punched her in the face. My dad laughed for days. Favorites. Giant boyfriend using his tiny date as a human shield being picked up by the waistband. Large black girl running like heck screaming my weave my weave. Gay couple screaming I'm gay in defense. We are equal opportunity haunters. We scare all creeds and sexualities. I was in a smallish room with a steel grate separating me from the folks walking through. It was my job to make sparks on said grate with a car battery. Safe. I know. I guess I really timed it right because I once made the mayor of my town shield himself with a small child. We've had two pissers in my house alone so far this season. Opened last weekend. Another haunt at work scared someone into defecating. When one particular big, burly dude figured out I was not, in fact, a mannequin and I could, in fact, get out of my cage and come for him, he ran so fast he went through one of our temporary walls like something out of a cartoon. Worst for him, funniest for his friends and me. My family used to run a haunted house through my high school years when me and my friends could help out. We went all out, we hand built a couple of coffins. We had a small airplane that had been sitting in a junkyard delivered to our backyard that we haunted and let people walk through. We had rooms designed to disorient people with bright strobe lights and checkerboard walls, and a lot of other generally scary crap. In one of the strobe rooms, we dressed a guy up in a checkerboard suit, hat and makeup, and you wouldn't be able to see him plainly standing in the middle of the room. He scared the pee out of a few people. After they were done with that room, they had to walk through me standing in a coffin pretending to be a mannequin. I took it very seriously, and the best one was after a young boy peed his pants in the strobe room. His mom and young sister were standing in front of me, talking to my dad about it, basically shooting the crap. The daughter whispered mom, that doll in the coffin moved and the mom came right up to me, poked me, watched me, and said no honey, it's not real. Well I was, and still am real, and all three of them peed their pants. 100% ratio on that tour. I worked at a theme park haunt as security last year and moved around the park a lot. I saw some really funny infuriating things. Possibly the worst and most infuriating. There was a dollhouse maze. This was where most of the underaged girls worked, because it was easier to make them look like china dolls. I'm watching the line and a large rowdy group comes through, shouting and banging on trash cans. They were obviously drunk and I had to ask them repeatedly to calm down. When they got to the front, I called for someone to watch the line so I could follow them through the maze. They continued their jerkish behavior all the way through, until one of the rooms. This room was lined with mannequins and a few actors who were very good at staying still. One of the men in the group decides to start grabbing the mannequins, and then he figured out that not all of the dolls are mannequins. He goes after one of the obviously living monsters, and flat out grabs her chest, full on honkey honkey action. This girl was 16. She flipped her crap and kicked him the nuts. 
We had to shut down the maze to flush everyone except our assailant out and then get the actual police involved. I was shocked that someone thought this was actual acceptable behavior. The man was arrested. His group was thrown out without refunds, obviously, and the girl's mother apparently pursued legal action against him, not the park, because she herself worked there as well in our hillbilly maze. I never worked at a haunted house, but I saw the guy get his legs cut off with a chainsaw. I found out it was a guy who lost his legs in a war, with fake ones, but blood was everywhere. It looked so real. I volunteered for a local haunted house one year and made a girl pee herself. Literally all I did was stand right on the other side of the door and put on the evilest grin I could conjure up. I was dressed as some kind of crazy blood soaked mailman or something. They didn't give me any lines or directions. They basically just told me to be scary. So, some poor girl walked in, held in the arms of her boyfriend and upon seeing me she screamed so freaking loudly and just wet her pants right there. Her boyfriend just kept pushing her through my room and into the next. It was an interesting experience. I was working at a haunted house at an amusement park near my hometown and I was cast as victim. So one night this couple passes me and the one of the actors comes running at me so I start to scream bloody murder. The look on the boyfriend's face was of utter terror. He picked his girlfriend up and swung me over his shoulder and ran us out of the area and almost past the front gate. Security had to block his way then reason with him to put us down. I have two stories. Context. I'm a small girl pretending to be a dead little girl in a little girl's bedroom and there is a bed smack in the middle of the room the people have to walk around in a U fashion. In training they said don't get our head. 1. I'm alone in my room frozen in the corner when some big gangster looking 6 foot guys come into the room. I remain frozen in the corner and this guy yells back to his friends yo there's a mathefriker in bed in the room before I even move he has jumped as high as physically possible into the air to jump on this bed. The bed was a piece of wood with a sheet on it. He bounced off the wood right and his friends begin laughing hysterically and so do I. All I hear is man you're so dumb even the monster is laughing her butt off at you. 2. I'm in the same corner of the room frozen when a person pushing another person in a wheelchair walks in. I stay frozen and assess the situation. The person in the wheelchair looks mentally able and I start to think man it would suck if I came to a haunted house and nobody scared me because I was in a wheelchair. So I waited for them to pass me and slowly crawled across the floor towards the person in the wheelchair. Jump up and yell. The person in the wheelchair looks at me sarcastically like really? But the person pushing the person in the wheelchair took off at top speed and before I could yell out they ran through the curtain at the end of the hall well past that curtain the hall changed directions. But that person obviously had no way of knowing that so they slammed the person 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 I ran to go help. But before I could get there they were gone. During my record weekend I made 13 women cry. The best is when you know the women could take you in a fight any day. But for some reason they are cowering in the corner. Yay haunted houses. One time two really drunk guys went in and started harassing one of our actresses in a cage. The owner, a cop, and a 6 feet 5 inches guy with a spiked club went in to get them out. When I was 17, I was working in one as a scarecrow. Many people didn't know I was real because I only scared one out of every 10 people or so. I saw a bachelorette party come in. They all had matching green tuba tops. I jumped out and screamed at the third woman in line. Out of 8 or so. She jumped and screamed so bad that her breasts popped out of her shirt. She fell down against a wall and sat there for a moment. Not realizing her breasts were out. One of them said um. Sarah, look down. She quickly looked down, blushed, and fixed her shirt. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was the first pair of boobs I'd seen in my life. My friend's job was to be live bait. That was the term the organizer for the boy scouts in my area had. I was the chainsaw murderer to take the bait. Basically, what my friend did was join people's groups at the door and act really scared. Introducing himself as Brian. He would do things like ask people's names about their kids, and say how creeped out he was. Brian would say that this place wasn't like other haunted house setups he'd been to, that it gave him a weird feeling, he'd gain their trust and act like a normal human being. Walking into the room, he'd signal me, spin around and say that he wasn't feeling scared at all anymore. He'd act perfectly fine, still walking backwards. 
he'd stop right in front of my closet, where I'd rev the chainsaw, and stick it under his left arm. It'd look like I had just impaled him on my chainsaw. He'd scream and yell, run and just scream. Normally, people would be scared absolutely crapless, and run out of the room. Once there was a group with just a girl and a boy walking with Brian. This one girl was not simply scared by this, she was mortified. She faints, and drops straight on the floor. The boyfriend freaks out and ditches her. He drops the tough guy look, bolts, and doesn't look back. So Brian and I are standing there, looking at the girl. I turn off my chainsaw, look him square in the face and say, well, crap. I end up carrying this ditzy glittered up girl all the way back to the very front of the house. I put her in the chair, and waiting for her to come around. When she regains consciousness, she flips again. Because I was a bastard that killed Brian naturally, I had Brian sitting next to her, and he reassured her that he was okay, and not in fact, dead. Then we explained to her that her so up and ditched her with a murderer in the room. We waited for almost a half hour for her to get a hold of her boyfriend, and to chew him out over the phone for leaving her. She refused to have him pick her up, and she chose to wait for her parents by going through the haunted house with Brian. Kid found a dead bird on the ground while waiting outside. As a prank, he went inside and inserted into a sensory box, which is a black box where people put their hands in and feel brains or something, even though it's actually spaghetti, etc. So everyone after him got a feel of brains and real dead bird, without even knowing it. But Having worked in a local house for a few years, I've seen some hilarious things. Among them, a super tough guy who's giving his girlfriend crap for being creeped out. I pop out behind him in full costume as Jason, which elicits a high-pitched shriek from him. He's backing up further until my buddy, in full Freddy regalia sneaks into his blind spot. Dude runs, slams into a wall and knocks himself stupid. Girl laughed. Was hard not to hide our shoulders from bouncing up and down from laughter. I was dressed as a vampire and standing in a coffin. When people would come around the corner, I would jump out and scare them. A woman came through and I jumped out. The woman lets out this piercing scream and jumps backwards. She hit the wall so hard she dented it pretty badly. She kept screaming and wouldn't stop. She was hyperventilating, crying, on and on. I was afraid to approach her and make it worse. I had to completely drop character and tell one of the guests to go get an uncostumed worker to assist her. Someone comes, gets her calmed down. She even talks to me and finally laughs about it. She leaves and I'm so relieved she was okay, but it really shook me up. 30 minutes later, she comes back. I don't jump out of the coffin. I just walk out and say what are you doing here she gets this embarrassed look on her face and says, I had fun. Looking back on it, the funniest part were the looks on the faces of the people behind her in the line the second time. To them, this vampire just walks out of a coffin and gets all bossy with some random woman. Former Universal's Halloween Horror Nights led here. People get fricked up. I saw someone OD right in front of me. I've had others just freak out and fight the scarictors. Some drop into a corner sobbing and have to be carried out. Depressants. Hallucinogens. Etc. Cocktails for these dehydrated people and introduce them into environments meant to disorient and frighten you. It's like the 4th of July for users. Not personally witnessed but here's my story. About 6 years ago I worked at a haunt in North Carolina. In one part of the trail, there were body bags that contained mannequins. Except one that had a co-worker inside. He freaked out a lot of people. But one group came through. Drunk and high. Got really freaked out and beat him pretty badly. He got sent to the hospital. They got sent to jail. I was a walk around character at Six Flags one year. At night. I dressed as a scarecrow. For the record. I was terrifying. And walked around the park. Freaking people out. One night. Not 20 minutes into my shift. I found a few high school kids to run up behind. As I got close and they started to scream. I got doused with ice water. Keep in mind, it was late October in Louisville, so it was around 40 degrees. I expected to find some pee butt kid when I turned around. It was a teacher that was chaperoning a field trip. I asked her why she did it. She said, you were about to scare those kids. Number. Freaking. Crap. We had security escort her to the front of the park and her group was asked to leave. I got to spend the rest of my night drinking hot chocolate in the dressing room with Tweety Bird. 
Well, this happened to me as a visitor to a haunted house, not a worker. We had made it all the way to the final room. We knew it was the last room because it let out right by the line we stood in to enter the house. It was all black and white checkered walls with strobe lights, and a guy, also in black and white, with a chainsaw chasing people out. I was the first to enter, sufficiently terrified from the rest of the house at this point. Chainsaw dude must have noticed my apprehension upon entering the room because he went right for me. I screamed and sprinted for the exit door, which of course was painted like the rest of the room. At full force I hit what I was hoping was the door. It wasn't. I did a full speed face plant into a very solid wall, put my front teeth through my lip, howled in pain and started crying. All my friends had exited out of the actual exit, so it was just me and chainsaw dude. I thought that was it for me. As he got closer, he saw that I was hurt, not just screaming in terror. So now chainsaw dude puts his chainsaw down and carries me out of the house, past all the other people in line waiting to enter, to the medical staff. I can only imagine what everyone in line thought as one of the monsters was carrying this screaming, crying, bloody kid out of the place. I like to think it put them all a little more on edge as they approached the entrance. Not the worst but certainly funny. I worked a haunted day ride with my sister one year and it was my job to get in line, ride with everyone else and get pulled off the wagon and murdered by my sister at the vampire station. One iteration, there was this teenage girl who was terrified. I sat next to her and pointed out how fake everything looked and how she didn't have anything to worry about. When we got to my sister's station and she ripped me off the wagon and threw me to the ground, I started screaming, IT's real, oh my god IT's real, the look of absolute unbridled abject horror in her eyes as the wagon rolled off into the darkness was one I'll never forget. Also, I am a horrible person. I played a zombie in a strobe light hallway along with someone else. He was in a straight jacket and would violently hit the chair against the wall while he was sitting down on it, and I would just stare at people as they walked by because I have been told that I had a really creepy smile with zombie makeup on. One of the groups that walked through was around 5 elderly folk. After my hallway partner did his jump scare, an old guy from that group started laughing. Then he saw me, laughed even more, but started coughing violently. He leaned against the wall, grabbing his chest, while he slowly fell towards the ground. My hallway partner and I just stood there in shock, frozen, not knowing what to do. I wasn't sure if I should call 9, 1, 1, or what. His friends weren't helping him, but a couple of seconds later, he gets up, points and laughs at us. Old people are awesome. I didn't work at a haunted house. But I was planning on going to one of those scary forest walks with my family. I put it off for a night and when I got up the next day, I put on the news and found out someone brought a shotgun to the trail I was going to take my family to. Something like 3 people were wounded. I worked at a haunted house where a pregnant lady went through the more interactive and scary part of the house rather than the easygoing side. She runs into two 6 feet 5 guys wielding real chainsaws minus the chain. Yay she went into labor. Every year my OA lodge, boy scout honor society thing, holds a haunted walk for cub scouts and anyone else who wants to go. This walk takes place in a very overgrown field, aka very tall grass, and ends in an old barn. Two years ago our theme was zombies. One of the last skit sections was set up as a police be barricade, flashing lights and all. So the group turns the corner after being scared and see the flashing lights and become hopeful that the scaring is over. Unluckily for them that is where I come in, a 6 feet 6 inches tall guy. I am walking towards the group hunched over to the point where to them it looks like I am maybe 5 feet tall. As soon as I hear the kids start to ask their parents what that thing is, I jump up to full height and sprint at them with a death wail coming out of my mouth. The group splits down the middle as I run through and suddenly I have to dodge a kid thrust at me by his father who is yelling take him with tears of fright in his eyes. I work as a zombie for a zombie survival experience in an abandoned mall. The experience is in two halves, the first half being the scripted movie experience and the second half being the skirmish where the survivors are let out into the mall to find supplies and cure components. One of the areas in the basement of the mall is a large open space save for support pillars and an escalator going to the upper floor. It is completely pitch black in there. The survivors all have tack torches but still don't provide too much light. 
For the skirmish part of the experience, one of the zombies gets to be the boss zombie and dress up as the clown. Whilst the normal zombies are slow shamblers, the clown howls with evil laughter and is allowed to sprint at the survivors. This particular day I was the clown. I followed a group of 5 or so survivors into the pitch black basement without them knowing I was there. We know the place pretty well so can vaguely work our way around the place even in the dark. The large basement room only has one exit, so as soon as they'd ventured there, I followed, essentially trapping them in. They were your typical middle aged male bravado kinda guys so I decided they were the perfect targets to frick with. As soon as I'd gotten them into the basement room, from behind a pillar I squeezed my clown nose which squeaks quite loudly and quite hilariously, to me at least. All the torches are pointed on this pillar so I figure I might as well reveal myself. I slowly lurch round the pillar into their firing line. They are armed with airsoft guns. I do my disgusting zombie clown laugh and break into a sprint towards them. They don't stick around to shoot me, they turn and run as fast as they can. Unfortunately for one of them, 10 feet behind him was one of the large support pillars which he greets full speed with his face and gets knocked clean out for 10 or so seconds. I saw him hit the pillar but didn't realize he knocked himself out until my co-workers later told me about a guy with a bleeding nose and concussion stumbling out of the basement asking to be taken back to the safe room. I don't even feel bad. If anything it means I'm doing my job properly. My parents met for the first time in a haunted house. My father was working there for the summer, and his job was to stand beneath the stairs and shake some of the loose steps back and forth while making scary noises, etc. Well, one night, my mother and some of her friends went through said haunted house. They eventually made it to the stairs where my father worked. He shook one of the steps, and my mother stumbled, breaking the heel off her high-heeled boots. She put up a stink, and got my father fired. So, for years after that, they told the story, my father claiming some crazy bee got him fired and my mother claiming some douche almost killed her in a haunted house. It wasn't until they were dating, about 4 years later, that they figured it out. Sounds like a movie plot, that's awesome. When I was in second grade my daycare put on a haunted house for the parents. I was in my own room dressed as a ghost and was supposed to say boo. When guests started walking and I began to cry because I was scared of them. The strobe light and the loud music. One of the daycare staff had to sit with me while I cried and said boo to the people walking by. That's adorable. I didn't work at the haunted house but I went to it around the same time this happened. Some girl working there was supposed to be on a bathtub with a rope around her neck loosely. But she slipped and ended up hanging herself. Luckily, another one of the employees noticed while walking through and got her down before she died. I worked security at one for a while. There was an area where you went through a maze and the walls were a mix of jail style bars and mirrors. The room was filled with fog and super bright strobe lights. Here's the kicker. One of the walls could be moved to close the maze and send the person into a circle with no way out. The employees were allowed to send people into the loop which only added like 3 minutes to the time. Well the room itself was referred to as the seizure room. At least every other day someone had a seizure in there. One night a kid gets sent into the circle and because of the dense fog and frequent moving of staff, gave you a killer headache to be in there too long, no one noticed he didn't come out. About 30 minutes later a patron starts yelling and we see him. Other patrons had seen him but assumed it was a prop. He had a seizure and hit his head when he fell. Lots of blood. He was okay when the ambulance took him out. Just a really bad head laceration. Many rules were made about the maze after that. Girl in a minute a straight chat herself. Goddamn. Probably haunts her to this very day. I went to a haunted house with my family when I was about 10. My little sister, 8 at the time, kept insisting that she wanted to go off alone. She wasn't allowed to but at some point she snuck off. Well the haunted house closed, and my family are all sitting outside of the entrance waiting for her to come out. The majority of it is a maze, with a guy with a chainsaw chasing you around. That actor came out and talked to us, and we told him my little sister's name. So he goes around the maze screaming Brittany I'm going to find you. You better get out of this maze for like 10 minutes and then she finally comes running out, sobbing with a bright red face. That was so fricked up to do to an 8 year old. I've worked several seasons at a haunted house, and I've seen some drunks throw up, 
pass out, etc. But the weird thing that has happened several times is that sometimes when I jump out and scare a female customer, her reaction will be to kiss me. The first time, I just thought, okay, that was weird, interesting girl, but then it happened several more times. I think it's just some kind of weird defense mechanism. I mean, I think they must know that they're not in actual danger, but by kissing they are quickly negotiating the social situation into a non-scary situation that they are in control of. It's happened to several of the guys that have worked here, but it's never happened to Lance. Sorry, bro. Maybe this year. Let's see. One guy had a panic attack in my area and had to leave on a stretcher. We had one girl pee herself that year, right after my scene this time. Several actors got punched and or kicked. Some people went through specifically to get a punch in on an actor. Several drunks. Several weaves lost. We had a wall of weaves out front. To be honest, though, I think my co-workers were worse than the customers. We had one guy who was smashed every day of work and didn't get fired until the last week of October because the management was so fricked that year. One of the relief workers never bothered to do his job, so we had a few actors get dehydrated and or nearly pee themselves from lack of bathroom breaks. I work in a haunted house around this time of year and it's surprisingly laid back. There is a few rooms that have set costumes and set people but about 50% of the rooms it's just grab a costume and be scary. The final room is a clown room and that's the room me and most of my friends would take and scare people. The most common thing to happen is for people to just freeze. They just stop in the middle of the tour and scream. The only way to get them to move is to come out of character and tell them they have to go. My favorite spot is after the clown room you make a hard right and go down a long dark hallway to leave. Right outside of the room there is a little nook that you can sit if you were to go left out of the clown room instead of a right down that hallway. The funniest thing I've ever seen had to be the time I was sitting in that nook with a chainsaw and saw the first person came around the corner. They didn't see me so when I revved the chainsaw she took off running and only got about 2 steps before promptly falling on her face. Now this is where it gets good. With it being a dark hallway the rest of the tour also took off running from hearing the chainsaw and one after another they fell on top of the first girl. The pile up at the end was somewhere between 8-10 people. I had to put the chainsaw down and go help but I hardly could I was laughing so hard. I volunteered at a haunted house as a zombie with a friend. Our area was a graveyard and we were supposed to jump out of our graves, cut carpet over a wooden stage and shake the chain link fence that was a partial barrier between our guests and us. As they passed us we jumped the fence and chased them out of the room. Enter young couple and their toddler. I hop the fence pig squealing and the child turns around and assumedly messes himself as he gets in the fetal position and balls. I was just like oh sorry. The parents laughed. I worked at the haunted house at the Playboy Mansion for a few years. It's a pretty dang big haunted house they take down the tennis courts and build it on top of it. The guests there are all wasted and usually missing pieces of their costumes, usually tops high five. I was working in the drop portrait hallway where there's like 6 paintings on the walls and 4 of them pop down and there's a costumed actor behind them that jumps out and scares people. Anyway, this group of girls walk through and we go to scare them. They screamed and ran forward down the hallway, which was pretty dark, and unfortunately for them had a sharp right turn at the end. So these drunk girls go screaming and running full speed into the plywood wall and bounce off onto the ground. We could all see them from our hiding places and were laughing our butts off, until we noticed this one girl didn't get up. She was on her back and moving, just not standing up. After a minute I opened my picture frame. Stuck my head out and asked if she was okay. When I did that, I noticed what the problem was she was wearing a super tight mini skirt and gigantic high heels and because of those, and booze, she couldn't stand up on her own. She was like some kind of seductive drunk turtle, helplessly flailing around on the floor, which for some reason was hilarious to me. I shut my picture frame and laughed harder. Don't worry, her friends came back. There was also this secret door that I could use to sneak up behind people. I was dressed from head to toe in zombie makeup and I shambled up behind these three stunning South American girls. When I got really close behind them I did this zombie moan thing and they spun around and started full on shrieking with their hands on their faces and everything. But they didn't stop shrieking or start moving. They just stood there shrieking at me. Through like three full breaths of shrieking, pausing to breathe, then shrieking some more. 
I couldn't handle it. I was trying to be professional. But I started laughing and went back to my spot. I did the same thing to another group of girls later that night. There was some screaming. Then I heard one say, I'm peeing. I'm peeing. Awesome. The thing about the Halloween party at the Playboy Mansion is that you get free drinks with the price of admission. So everyone is smashed. Everyone. It makes it funnier for the people working there because drunk people are super entertaining. Especially when they start getting naked and swimming in the grotto. I was in a room full of bizarre dressed up mannequins and had on heavy prosthetics. One of my scares I used was to stand super still and everyone always thought I was a mannequin. 2. I heard a couple enter my section and held perfectly still. They were probably in their late 30s. They decided to sneak right behind my counter and he started fingering her right at my feet. I wanted to scare them so badly and decided to wait till they were done to really freak them out. A few more visitors passed through and I didn't move to scare them at all. The guy finishes and stands up. He then rabbit punches me, still thinking I'm a mannequin, as hard as he can. I yell the frick. Man he falls back into an operating table in shock. She starts screaming, pulls up her pants and jets out of the room. And he finally manages to back out of the room repeating I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Not a worker. But I was with someone in a haunted house. And the girls in front of us were walking past a part where the people would punch through the wall. She was like. They can't hit me. Blah 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 blah. And stood next to it. The people behind the wall didn't know she was there and she got sucker punched. Hilarious. My string quartet worked a gig at a local haunted house. The place was in our local mall, and the scariest thing was probably the vision loss from the several dozen strobe lights, because the abandoned dillards give nothing to the atmosphere. Anyways, I followed a group of girls I recognized and hated from school, and started screeching on my violin in the scariest way possible. Mind you, I had nothing remotely scary on, unless an ankle length skirt gives you the willies, and some zombie makeup. I ran up and started playing over someone's shoulder. And the girl ran out of our section and then screamed, I'll play the viola before leaving. My friend, the violist, had to take a break from laughing so hard. A few years ago, the Haunted Storm Stadium featured a walkthrough with an evil Alice in Wonderland theme. One of the rooms had many doors and only one could open. A young teen was on the floor in that room, and he was clearly in shock. My brother and I went through twice and he hadn't left. The alleys in this room didn't break character and asked us if we knew the way out, and did not reassure him or offer to help him. I didn't witness the incident, but I got to see the aftermath. We had a Silent Hill room with like a dozen zombie nurses in it, two of which were actual people instead of dummies. Looking into it you could not tell which was a dummy and which was a real person. These girls were that good at staying perfectly still. A patron came into the room, a typical frat boy bro type guy, and he just dongs back and hits one of the nurses full on in the face. Too bad that nurse was one of the two girls in the room. She's out cold for at least 20 minutes with blood pouring out of her face the whole time from her crushed nose and missing teeth. We had to have her rushed to a hospital. The other girl in the room thankfully got a decent look at the bastard who did it, and we shut the whole thing down while we sent the cops in looking for him. They caught him and dragged his butt out in cuffs. I don't know the details after that but I do know charges were filed against him and the girl made a full recovery after a nose job and some teeth implants. You have been spotted by the money pigeon. Comment gimme gimme and he will bless you with good fortune. Like and subscribe you magnificent person.